Hello students, this is Mrs. Rook. In this short presentation, we are going to review the commutative property of multiplication. Now we have studied the commutative property before, but we, we, we did it with the property of addition. Let's recall what the commutative property told us in terms of addition by looking at an example on the screen. We recall that for a problem like two, plus three, which we know in our minds gives us five, that we can switch the order of our two add-ins, the two and the three, and instead say three plus two, and that will still give us five. And as you see on the screen, we know that's true because the total remains the same. You still have the same overall sum of five dots, for instance, regardless of the order in which you add those two add-ins. So, Knowing what you know about the commutative property with addition, what do you think the commutative property means when it comes to multiplication? Take a second and think about that. We know the commutative property has to do with order, right? Well, that's the same thing that will apply with the commutative property with multiplication. It's going to be the order in which we are multiplying. So when we are looking at our multiplication problem on the screen, such as four times three, what does that mean? That means that we have four groups, one, two, three, four, and there are three items, one, two, three, or three balls in each of them. And we've illustrated that with an array. So we can see that in this particular example that um, we have a total of 12 dots, right? But what if we decided to switch this order around a little bit and instead consider having three groups that have four items in each? So let's say these are the groups, one, two, three, and they have four items in each. Can you not see that those two illustrations are 100% the same? The number of balls has not changed in either. So what we're seeing is the order that we multiply is not going to change the answer to the multiplication problem. What's the answer to a multiplication problem called? Do you remember? It's called the product. So the product is going to stay the same regardless of the order of our factors. The factors are what we multiply together. So four times three will give us the same as, how many groups do we have here? One, two, three, three times four. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in there really quickly. And move it up just a bit. Ooh or move that down just a bit. So four times three is equal to three times four. And we can see that again, because the overall product, the quantity of all of those dots has not changed. Let's look at another example. Let's use the commutative property to write the multiplication problem for the second array. So I want you to look at the first array. We see five times two on the screen. Why? Because there are one, two, three, four, five groups. And each of those groups are one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. There are two items in each of those five groups, right? Well, what happens if we took that array and then we just plopped it down like this? So we changed the direction. This is called a 90 degree rotation. You see that on the screen. If I take this and I plop it down 90 degrees, this is what I get. Same number of balls are totally there. But now, instead of having one, two, three, four, five groups, I have one, two groups, right? Two groups. How many items are in each of those groups? Five. So we are seeing that there's still 10 balls, but we've changed the order of the factors. Instead of having five times two, we now have two times five. And that should give us the same exact answer because we see it doesn't change the overall product. So this array shows us that the commutative property works, but it doesn't matter the order of the factors, it just matters that the factors are the same. So five times two equals 10 is the same as two times five. Let's do one more. Is the product of these two arrays the same? 
and how do you know? Now I'm hoping you can totally see this because my little screen's there. I'll bring it down a little bit. Okay. These sure do look a lot alike. This has one, two, three groups, and there are six dots in each. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, with three in each, right? If I took this array and I rotated it up 90 degrees, I produce the same exact array. Nothing changes about it in terms of the quantity, so they have to be the same. So if we would use the commutative property to express this, we would go ahead and say that three times six is equal to six times three, which equals 18. And you could just say the arrays have the same total dots, the second one is just a rotation of the first. That's how we know they're the same, because they're the same exact shape. One is just a rotation of the other one. So that's what the commutative property says. It says that the order of our two factors, the way that we multiply, the order that we multiply factors is not going to change the product, that that product will stay the same. 